So let's take a journey through memory lane. If we remember back to a previous video where I, well, where I got destroyed by a CMOS battery, while I was trying to figure out why this PC wouldn't boot up, I also went back and kind of redid a lot of my hardline water tube runs to try to make them straighter than they were my, my first go around. We, we, we're better. We still, got, we still got somewhere to go. But while I did that, a lot of you guys noticed that I routed the water lines in and out of my graphics card a little backwards than what you'd, uh, you'd normally expect. And the reason I did that is because the flow pattern in and out of this distribution block or this big distro plate in the front, this side is the in and this side would be the out and rather than have the lines jump over themselves to go into this vertically mounted GPU, I was just like, let's just go backwards. Let's go in this side and come out what would normally be the inside. And for the most part, while using this in game since that, since that video, I haven't had any issues with thermal problems, but a lot of you guys said that because I did this, I'm leaving a lot of thermal performance on the table and that's what we're going to find out today. Does this routing matter? Does in this side or in this side really translate to better or worse performance? Now in a lot of water blocks, for like instance this one, this is a CPU block from EK, it is written right on there that this is the in and this is the out so there's no confusion which side's which. Uh, for this mono block on top, normally the intake is directly over the fins and out would be you know the other side. But this one Eh, doesn't say anything, so I don't know if it matters. So let's find out. Now before we get into that, I got some other like little housekeeping things I want to do. As you can see, I'm trying to declutter my life. It's, it's been a real struggle. But the first thing I want to do is I want to replace the RGB on the shelf. Um, right now it's it's kind of like individual strips running down it. I want it to be I want it to be cleaner, kind of like the uh, the fan showdown board. So we're gonna replace the lights on the shelf and get rid of some of the junk on it. And then we're also gonna replace the fans in the computer, not because they're bad, because I'm bad. Um, when I was redoing the, the cooling lines, I took the, the RGB connector with uh, the male side on it and I dropped it. And it swung into the case and arced and, well, the static colors work fine. I mean, if you have them just like red, they're good. But if you go back to like white, it's, it's no longer white. It's like a yellow color. So that's a real bummer because these are like the new EK Vardar fans and I really like them. But we're gonna switch them because I messed them up. So let me tell you, I spent way too much time messing around with, with all this, especially the fans and the RGB strip. The strip I really wanted to use didn't actually work. The, there was too many RGBs for the channel of the um, Razer controller. You can have about 80 to 85 RGBs per channel. There's six channels. And that was one of those high density 144 LEDs per meter. So that didn't work. But luckily I had uh, one of these Nightbird RGB strips. Now I can't tie this into my PC like I was originally gonna do, but it does have a little app that I can change everything. Uh, obviously, everything right now is uh, a rainbow explosion. We'll just, we'll figure that out here in a, in a little bit. But, look what I've done. I've, I've destroyed everything. So, currently, the graphics card is now on its own loop. And the reason I did that is I don't want the CPU to put any heat load into this test so we can get some halfway decent results. Uh, currently, the graphics card this is the pump that we're, we're using for the graphics card. It's coming through this flow meter where we can monitor fluid temperature. The idea being when I swap the lines, I'm gonna have to drain the loop and I want to start at a constant fluid temperature for each test. We get a good kind of apples apples testing. So currently we're coming out of the pump through the flow meter into this 360 millimeter radiator with three T30s in advanced mode. So they'll be screaming along at 3000 RPMs then out of the radiator into the backside of this water block through the fins and back to the pump. Now, before we start, I'll turn the fans on. We'll let everything sit at idle till we get a good stable fluid temperature and then we'll play some Battlefield 2042 beta for about an hour or so and see what our, what our temperatures level off at. Then we'll drain the loop, swap the lines, stabilize the fluid temperature, run it again and see which one, if either, is better. Also, I have a, I have a build coming up that I wanna use that graphics card so this kinda helps because now I'll be able to take it out without having to mess with that. But we need to tame the rainbow, too. All right, so fluid temperatures have settled about 21 C, which is pretty decent. Room temperature is about 20.4, so that's about right. Graphics card currently set at idle 25. We'll do some gaming, see how we sit. So the real bummer here is that the Battlefield 2042 beta just ended this morning. So combustor it is, and it's been about 45 minutes. We're sitting at 35, 36 degrees Celsius. Room temperature still around 21 degrees. Fluid temperature about 25, so that's the number to beat. We'll let everything kind of cool down to what it was before. Flop the tubes around, try it again. 
So after another 45 minutes, fluid temperature is again 25 degrees. We're sitting about 33, 34 max. So you could say maybe one degree difference, uh, margin of error maybe. Let's turn these fans off, it's pretty loud. But going back to this specific graphics card, does the inlet and outlet matter? I would say no. Um, 33, 34, 35 degrees, that's, those are all really good GPU temperatures. They're all, I think they're within margin of error. If I ran this test over and over and over again, I think I would get fluctuating results that would kind of overlap. Um, also, I did look at the manual for this graphics card while I was running these tests, and it does say in there that you can choose to use whatever port you want as the inlet and outlet, which is not always the case. For example, the block we looked at earlier had a distinctive inlet and outlet, and this one probably does as well. But for the most part, if the manual says you can use whatever you want, it's up to you which way you want to route it. So for this graphics card, I'm going to keep the same configuration just because I think it looks a little better. Maybe I'll redo my loop again, get some more practice on my hardline tubing. But in the case of this 2080 Ti and this water block, which port is the inlet or the outlet, doesn't matter. Till next time.